Hi friends, so in this particular video, we will be talking about isothermal transformation diagrams or in other words, it is also known as time temperature transformation diagrams. Sometimes it is also referred to as triple T diagrams. I have already established the fact that heat treatment, the development of microstructure and the resultant mechanical properties have a lot to do among themselves or in other words they are interconnected to each other so in order to design a material or in order to obtain certain mechanical properties in a material we need to develop a particular microstructure in the material and heat treatment is a good way to achieve the required kind of microstructure so that we get desirable mechanical properties at the end so these three are interrelated in this particular course we will be focusing on iron carbon alloys but the whatever concepts we are explaining here that can be extended to any other alloy but as i explained to you earlier iron carbon alloys are of significant interest in engineering and our course we will be restricting to the microstructure development in an iron carbon alloy particularly of eutectoid composition so if you have forgot if uh, if you have forgot what is eutectoid composition and what is eutectoid a reaction here is a reaction you have gamma austenate where the carbon content is in between like 0.76 weight percentage of carbon it dissociates to give you an alpha ferrite where the carbon content is very small and a cementate phase where carbon content is considerably high and we already discussed that this resulting microstructure is of is containing of alternate layers of ferrite and cementate and it is also known as perlite microstructure let me just show you the phase diagram also so we are referring to this particular point over here this is the eutectoid composition now before i start talking about isothermal transformation diagrams let's do a thought experiment okay so let's say i am some i have a iron carbon alloy of eutectoid composition and i am cooling it from a temperature let's say 1000 degrees centigrade somewhere here so this is the eutectoid this is the particular vertical line which corresponds to the process of cooling so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to rapidly cool this particular alloy from a temperature of 1000 degrees centigrade to different temperature let's say in the first thought experiment i'm bringing it down to a temperature of 600 degrees centigrade and in the second thought experiment i'm bringing it down to 650 degrees centigrade and in the third i'm bringing it down to 675 degrees centigrade so if i can tell you like mark those points like this let's say this is 675 and this is 650 and this is 600 so this is the first two three so i'm rapidly bringing it down to this temperature and i'm just holding it at that particular temperature then what will happen obviously the transformation of austenite to perlite will happen in this particular thought experiment our interest is to measure the temperature that this particular reaction will take to completely transform the austenite into perlite so how much time will it take for the 100 percentage austenite to be a 100 percentage perlite in three of these cases so we will measure this and then we will plot curves so if we do a similar experiment as i have discussed before then we will end up with a figure curves like this or a plot like this so in this plot what i'm showing you is okay i bought the temperature to six, 600 degrees centigrade and i'm holding it at that particular temperature i'm allowing the transformation to happen at that constant temperature then it is taking a while to for the reaction to begin and then it's slowly picking up pace and it takes another 
let's say a few few more minutes or a few more seconds it takes a while for the hundred percentage austenite to uh, convert or to transform into hundred percent perlite so on the x-axis you have got time on the y-axis you have either the percentage of perlite or either the percentage of austenite similarly here also similar sort of curves are drawn for the other two temperature as well 650 degrees centigrade and 675 degrees centigrade so i request you to pause this video at this particular moment and try to deduce some inferences out of this plot that is very important in engineering when you see some plot first of all before reading anything just try yourself give yourself a try to get some inferences out of it so now look at what are the remarks or what are the inferences that we can get out of this particular plot so definitely the amount of subcooling from the eutectoid temperature that is 727 degrees centigrade is the eutectoid temperature so the amount of subcooling from that particular temperature is definitely influencing the time the reaction uh, it, the time it takes to begin the reaction moreover it influences the time for the complete transformation also so that's a first inference so when your subcooling is high then reaction starts a bit faster the rate of the reaction is much rapid compared to the other two cases so the higher the amount of subcooling from the eutectoid temperature higher higher the rate of temp uh, transformation now okay uh, can i get a much better figure consolidating all these things because in this particular curve we have got just composition and time are we missing something we have got just two phases here like perlite and austenite so now we will go ahead and discuss about a better way of plotting all these data together the whole driving force to create a particular diagram of this sort is that we need to capture the temperature time dependence together in one particular figure so we already discussed about this particular figure then in order to get the time temperature dependence it's a little bit complicated because we have to draw curves like this for every temperature so can we assimilate all this information into one particular figure so how it goes is now you do a similar thought experiment for a temperature like say 650 degrees centigrade and you have a curve like this now using the repeating this particular experiment for a many number of temperatures we can finally form this particular diagram called the isothermal transformation diagram so here i have shown how it can be done for a temperature of 650 degrees centigrade this is let's say this is, let's make it 650 degrees centigrade first of all so this is let's say i'm performing it for 650 degrees centigrade then i am extrapolating those value like let's say at this particular point the transformation begins and i am marking that point here then the time required for 50 percentage of the transformation to be completed i am marking a point here corresponding to that time i am just drawing a vertical and marking the point at this on this particular line which corresponds to a temperature of 650 degrees centigrade similarly i am marking yet another point which will correspond to the 100 percentage completion of the transformation so doing a similar kind of stuff or an exercise for the other temperatures we can finally come up with this kind of a diagram called the isothermal transformation diagram the key thing to be noted here is that the time is on the logarithmic scale this is one thing which students usually forget this is very important because a lot of the inferences that we derive or deduce out of this particular diagram uh, strongly uh, demands the 
knowledge or the understanding that the x-axis of these particular plots are plotted on logarithmic scale so this is the beginning curve which will uh, represent the 100 percentage austenite and this is the completion curve as i have shown here this is the completion curve which will represent 100 percent perlite and in between we have a 50 percentage transformation line as well and as you can see here above 727 degrees centigrade nothing happens the austenite stage is stable only below the temperature of 727 degrees centigrade we have a transformation okay i hope so we will talk more about this is ttt diagrams or time temperature transformation diagram so here we are capturing temperature time and transformation as well so that's why it is called a triple t diagram see few things to be kept in mind this curve is only valid for an iron carbon alloy of eutectoid composition and the curves are only valid if temperature of the alloy is held constant throughout the duration of the reaction it's like you bring it down to 650 degrees centigrade then you have to hold the temperature of the alloy there itself so that's why it is called isothermal transformation diagram I hope I conveyed the idea of triple T diagrams now we will talk about the formation of each of these microstructures uh, using this particular diagram how time temperature dependence will influence the formation of each microstructure and in turn the mechanical properties of the alloy thanks